I think I mentioned it in a previous video that my neighbor replaced his back deck with composite. And then he asked me if I wanted the old boards. And of course I said yes, because I'm always up for getting something useful for free. Mainly I wanted them to close in the bottom of my deck, but I also wanted them to make the balusters for the front porch railing. And then I picked out the best looking ones for that, then cut them all the length. The edge of these boards is actually bullnose, so the first thing I had to do was rip that off. And since each board is five and a half inches wide, I could get three balusters from each piece that are a little over an inch and a half wide. Originally, I was going to cut these on a taper, fat on the bottom and thinner at the top, but I decided to cut them all straight because I really didn't think that that taper would make them look better. After they were all cut, they're still pretty wet from being outside, so I left them to dry out for a few days. Next thing I had to do was clean them up and make them smooth, and there are two options, and I chose sanding rather than running them through my planer. I don't think the planer would have been faster, and since these boards are used and might still have nails in them, or cracks and crevices filled with sand and grit, I didn't think it was worth the possibility of ruining a set of knives. With the sanding out of the way, each one had to be primed on all sides and then set out to dry. Then I did a little sanding to smooth out the raised grain and they were ready for the first coat of paint. I gave them a few days to dry before moving them out to the front where I made some careful measurements for the railings. I'm using new framing lumber for the railings, mostly 2x4s that will span the top and bottom. I was very picky when I bought these, but it's nearly impossible to avoid a small amount of twist. Luckily, that's easy enough to fix by planing down the high spots before sanding it through the planer to flatten it. I could then rip off the edge on each piece and then send those through the planer to smooth out the saw cuts. The way this railing is made is the balusters are attached to thin strips and then those are fastened to the top and bottom rails. I'm cutting those strips about a half inch thick for more of the 2x4 and those will get plain smooth as well. After that it's back outside for more sanding, mostly to ease over the edge on the railing so that they won't be so sharp. And you guessed it, more priming and more painting. I'm not sure, but I think by this time it was early October. It was getting a bit cooler at night, but still really nice out during the day. A few more days went by before I got around to the actual installation. And I started by cutting the bottom rail to length and fitting it in.
To fasten these, I'm using galvanized nails driven in at an angle. I drive them in most of the way with just a hammer, then sink the heads below the surface with a quarter inch bolt used as a nail set. Before moving on, I take the time to cock the seam and fill the nail holes. It's a lot easier to reach this now before the balusters are installed. I calculated the spacing for the balusters, then I cut a block to lay it out on one of the strips. And then I could transfer those marks to the other strip. The best place to put this together is right on the porch, right where it goes. So I laid out the balusters with the best face up. I then used a shim block to center each baluster on the strip before driving two galvanized nails into each one. I did the same on the top, then lifted the assembly into place between the posts. Before attaching the bottom, I ran a bead of caulking, and that will help to glue the strip to the rail and keep water out. I used a few nails to secure it down to the bottom rail and then ran another bead of caulking on the outside seam. I did exactly the same thing on the top, a bead of caulking on the strip before setting the rail in place. To fasten the top rail, once again I'm using galvanized nails driven in at an angle. I also added some screws to this after I was done. I found that using good quality caulking to seal all of the seams will really help to prolong the life of the paint on the exterior woodwork. Before moving on to the next section, now is a good time to fill any nail holes or cracks in the used lumber. All of the other straight sections get assembled and installed exactly the same as the first one.
The railing for the steps is quite a bit trickier, and I started by marking and cutting the angle on the top and bottom rail. For these, I'm doing it in reverse. I'm starting at the top and fastening that rail solidly to the post before I do anything else. With the bottom rail in temporarily, the strips are clamped on to find the exact length and angle of the balusters. I then set the miter saw to that angle and make those cuts. Just like the straight sections, the balusters are nailed to the strips and the spacing matches the rest of the railing. For a project like this, getting the parts ready to install takes as much time or more than putting it all together. There are faster options, but of course, they are also more expensive. Besides that, I've always done things this way and try to fabricate as much as I can myself. That way, if something's not right, I only have myself to blame and can usually fix it pretty quickly. When you use lower cost or free materials, there is the potential for some big savings, as long as you are willing to put in the work. I didn't cover making the posts for the stair railings in video, but I did go over it pretty thoroughly in the website article. So if you're interested in more details on that, you can find a link to that in the video description. I got the other stair railing done and gave the caulking a few days to dry before putting on the second coat of paint. And that's basically it. I also have railings to make for the back deck, but those will be a lot simpler than these. Anyway, as usual, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.